What's going on guys? Welcome back to Pat Outdoors. This is going to be part four of the Ultimate Supermoto project. I'm determined to ride this thing this weekend, so I'm not going to stop today until we at least get it in riding condition. I rented a cabin at a local state park for the weekend and I want to take this with me to test it out. So I am going to put it back together fully except for the controller. I'm just temporarily going to reinstall the Chinese one that I've been using. I did order my Kelly controller from Electro & Co. finally. I appreciate Stephanie for answering all of my questions. I ended up actually buying two Kelly controllers, one for this bike and one for another upcoming project that we'll talk about later. But let's get this thing back together. Now you might notice that the handlebar that I just installed is significantly wider than your typical Razor handlebar. And that's because this is meant for a full-size motorcycle. I just cut about an inch and a half on each side to slim it down to 26 inches. Combined with the risers that came with the Alter Ego fork, I think it positions the bar right where I want it, where it's gonna be comfortable for me. And I have a half knee mirror with a reflector in the front for safety reasons. I do ride this bike on the street. This is the variable speed control or switch. This came with my Kunray kit, so we can adjust slow to fastest setting. This is just phone mount that I've been using on all my bikes. And then this is a key throttle that I got from Amazon with a voltmeter. I love this thing. This is my favorite looking one versus these cheaper looking ones. I think this one's like not even 20 bucks. Slowly but surely, it is starting to look more like an adult size pit bike which is exactly the look I'm going for. Out of all the things that I've installed on this bike so far, I can't believe it's a kickstand that's kicked my ass. This was such a pain to line up. It's only one bolt, but you can't get it through and start threading it uh, until it's perfectly lined up and you constantly have to fight this really tight spring tension. Uh, what helped out a lot was prying down the kickstand from the bottom side of the fork. Got the brake levers mounted. You'll notice that the front one has a brake master cylinder. That's because it's actually meant for a full size dirt bike, kind of like this one on my Kawasaki. The phone mount, I ended up moving to the center of the handlebar. I think it'll look a lot nicer there if I'm using like a Speedo app or if I'm using a GPS while I'm riding, it'll look almost like a cluster. For the rear brake, I'm using Zoom mountain bike brakes. It's the same style that uh, Electro & Co and Lone Star uses for their brake kits. I just have a 160 millimeter rotor paired with it along with a 160 mil adapter. If you are interested in checking out any of the parts that I'm using for this project, I'll have everything linked in the description in case you wanna check it out. One thing I wish that um, was a little different with my front brake setup was this hose. I do not like how long that is. I think it looks a little bulky. I wish it was a foot shorter. So I might change that in the near future. 
Until my Kelly controller comes in from Electro, I'm just gonna be reusing this Kaziel 72 volt 45 amp controller that I got from Amazon a couple months ago. Obviously it's nowhere close to as good quality as the Kelly, but it works well considering it was 70 bucks. What I'm gonna leave out of today's project though is this multi-switch that I'm gonna be installing on the left side of the handlebar. This is like a horn switch, turn signals, headlight switch and whatnot, and the voltage step down converter. I wanna do all this when I do the Kelly controller so I can just finalize the wiring once. I don't wanna redo it over and over again. Before I put all the covers back on, I just wanna show you how I have the controller mounted and how I have all the wiring hooked up. In case you haven't seen a uh, brushless motor before, if you're new to razors, this is a junction block that came with my uh, Kunray kit. Uh, the positive and negative wires, this is the power supply plug, which I'm gonna hook up to the battery when everything is all fully hooked up and done. There's a cover that protects all this from touching each other. Uh, these blue yellow and green wires these are called the phase wires these three go straight to the motor these three are supplied from the controller uh, and then this is the 12 volt ignition switch ground pretty straightforward it's color coded here are all the connectors for the um, throttle speed controller and power switch you'll notice that all this is not used that's because this is for accessories that are not really needed or at least not needed in my application but i'm going to try to fit all of this in those black plastic covers since i wasn't able to do that before hopefully i can do it now I think the covers are gonna work. I just needed to make minor modifications. I ended up cutting the tabs off the top since it was gonna make contact with the bottom of the controller. But besides that, that's the only thing I needed to cut off of these. I ripped out all the old decals. Also the wiring, since we're not gonna need any of the on off switch or this charge port, I just cleaned it all up. Uh, the BTR battery pack comes with its own charge port which I'm thinking is gonna fit right where the on-off switch was. Hopefully that'll work well. The on-off switch itself was not too difficult to take off. You just had to scrape off all the glue and then pry it and push it outward. Other than that, should be good to go. This is how we ended up having the covers mounted. I was able to get all three bottom bolts to go through and fully thread. The top two, however, I had to secure with zip ties because the gap was simply too wide. Considering how much stuff we crammed in there, I thought it was pretty successful. And then the charge port, I couldn't believe how well that fit. I didn't have to modify the hole at all. 
I just um, screwed in these two self tappers and mounted it nice. One thing I forgot to go over on the last video are the brackets that I make to bridge the gap between the tank and the front fairings on the CRF 50 bodies. I just cut a piece of raw aluminum bar, like an inch and a half long, and I drilled two holes. And then I bolted in with the original hardware. It just bridges the gap right there on both sides. So we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna put the body back on. Right, guys the bike is finally ready for its first official ride so i'm going to let it charge overnight and then we're going to take it out this weekend if you found this video helpful in any way do me a favor and hit that like button and if you like this kind of content want to keep up with some of my projects such as the 72 volt supermoto build consider subscribing to this channel but this is going to be it for today thank you for watching